Dressing for the White House, Jackie Kennedy's Relationship with Oleg Cassini. In the book, A Thousand Days of Magic by Oleg Cassini, he recounts his time spent with Jackie. I first met Jacqueline Bouvier several weeks before she married Senator John Kennedy in September of 1953. When I was introduced to Jackie at El Morocco, a nightclub in New York, it was obvious that she was somebody. She had a presence, a star quality. She appeared to be the classic debutante, charming, attractive, and well-educated. But she had a little something extra too. And people were drawn to her, even then. That she was special, I knew but I never suspected how important she would become in my life. Right after the election in the fall of 1960, I was taking a vacation in Nassau when the president-elect's secretary called me. Before the election, I had written Jackie a note to say that I hoped she would consider me as she went through the process of choosing someone to design her wardrobe for the White House. So it was a complete surprise to me when the president-elect's secretary said, Mrs. Kennedy is planning her new wardrobe, and she would like to know if you would be kind enough to come and see her Monday at the hospital, and maybe bring along some of your sketches. At this time, Jackie was convalescing after giving birth to her son, John. As soon as I hung up, I realized what I had gotten myself into, I had only two days before my appointment, and no pencils, no papers, and in Nassau. It was not altogether easy to find these things. Finally, with a sketch pad and lots of sharp pencils in hand, I got to work. Nothing. Not one idea. I had just been given an enormous opportunity, and my mind was blank. I tried to relax. Oleg, I said to myself. Just think about Jackie. You know her better than any of the other designers. You know how she is, think. Suddenly it came to me. This is like a film and you have the opportunity to dress the female star. This was not so different from my old job in Hollywood designing for motion pictures. As soon as I felt on familiar ground, I calmed down and the ideas started to flow. I was thinking about the role she was going to play and my sketches started filling up the empty sheets. It was a daunting proposition but I began to take what I knew about her, about her taste, and create the first outlines of a wardrobe on the flight back from Nassau to New York. When I was designing for motion pictures, I always tried to make the silhouette similar to the person I worked for. So in broad outlines, I designed a concept. Jackie reminded me of an ancient Egyptian princess Very geometric, even hieroglyphic, with a sphinx-like quality of her eyes, her long neck, slim torso, broad shoulders, narrow hips, and regal carriage. She was the perfect model for very simple lines, a minimal par excellence. I wanted to dress her cleanly, architecturally, in style. I would use the most sumptuous fabrics in the purest interpretations. I called it the A-line. When I arrived in New York, I rushed into my office with about 20 sketches to see what fabrics and colors I had available. I put the fabric swatches along with five or six of my most powerful drawings into a portfolio and got on a plane for Washington. When I walked into her room, Jackie was sitting up in bed looking cheerful and pretty. I found her surrounded by sketches from some of the most important, famous designers of the moment. American, French, Italian, etc. How was Nassau, she asked, turning our meeting into a friendly chat rather than a business decision. While I was recounting one or two of my adventures during the trip, I casually cast an eye over my fellow designer's work. What was this? Not one of them had really bothered to think about the first lady. Instead, they had sent her the best of their latest collections. So, Oleg, she said at last, would you like to work with me? Jack and I would love to have you around. No, thank you, I replied. But why? she asked, a little surprised by my answer. I am very grateful to you for thinking of me, but no. Look around you, I said, pointing to the various sketches. All these people are dying to dress you. 
and as far as I'm concerned, they're all good. If this is what you want, then you don't need me. But if you use them, do you know what will happen to your life? It will become a never-ending fitting, with people coming and going and no time for anything else. In my opinion, you need to stick with one person. Someone who can create a look just for you. Make your own statement rather than being a model for someone's pretty dresses. If you take my advice, choose one of these people. Whichever one you like best, because that's the only way you'll save time and worries. So thanks for inviting me here, but I don't think it would be a good idea. Well, since you are here, she suggested with a puzzled look, would you mind showing me some of your ideas? What I was proposing was something much more elaborate than any single sketch hanging on the walls. I was proposing a new look, a new concept, my interpretation of how Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy should appear in her role as First Lady. I had not merely selected from my current collection, I had created a concept for her. I told her that she needed a story, a scenario as First Lady. I said, I want you to be the most elegant woman in the world. I think that you should start from scratch with a look. A look that will set trends and not follow them. And with that she replied, you are absolutely right. After Oleg had showed Jackie many of his sketches, she stated, well, I'm convinced you are the one, but I'll only do it if I am the only one, I told her. Otherwise, it's too much of a logistics problem. Can you do it by yourself though? She asked. I'm going to need an awful lot of clothes. Sure I can, I replied, putting on my show of confidence and only then beginning to realize what a tremendous undertaking this really would be. At the time, people were looking to Europe for trends and American fashion was not even considered. But Jackie was to change all of that. American fashion design was thrust into the world arena as the Jackie Kennedy look became a worldwide trendsetter. When it came to the White House, she wanted to invite the most important writers, musicians, and artists and the most interesting and influential people. She would entertain in impeccable style, setting new standards for elegance. The White House would become brighter, more interesting, and in keeping with the youth of its inhabitants, more fun. The Camelot myth had begun, and it was created by Jackie, who began a revolution in good taste. When Jackie selected me as her personal couturier, the image of the American designer changed. It became glamorous, just as it was in France, where a designer was viewed as an artist, an intellectual. A transformation occurred in American fashion as a result of Jackie Kennedy. Jackie was trying to attain the unattainable to be the best dressed woman in the world without appearing to be the best dressed woman in the world. While I was having lunch near my showroom, someone mentioned that the president had been shot in Dallas. At the time, I did not react. I don't know why. It could have been that the thought was too overwhelming. When I returned to my studio, I found everyone listening to the news on the radio. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. The president was dead. I went to my office, closed the door, and just sat there. The feeling was much the same as when my mother died, an overpowering numbness. It was hard to believe that he was gone. It was hard to believe then, and in some ways it still is. The image of the president remains very strong with me. The thousand days of the Kennedy administration was a magical moment in time, and there will never be another like Jack.
In the first few years after the assassination, I didn't see very much of Jackie. She was still wearing many of my clothes I had designed for her when she was in the White House. In fact, her first public appearance after the president's death was in 1964, when she went to the Metropolitan Opera, wearing one of her favorite gowns, the blue Empire-style dress I had designed in 1962. I continued to send her things from time to time, and we maintained our relationship through letters and phone calls. But it was hard for her to be with people who had been part of her life in the White House. She said to me once that she didn't want to remember anything from that time, and that seeing certain people brought back painful memories and unbearable sorrow. That probably eased a little as the years went by, but I think it was always hard for her. Once she was out of the White House and on her own, there was no reason why she should have only one designer. Her life was much less structured and formal, no longer controlled by protocol. Her time was no longer dictated by her position as First Lady. Shopping was something she now had time to do. The last time I saw Jackie was when I went to see her in her apartment on 5th Avenue. I had sent her some clothes and she had said, I want you to meet somebody. That was when I met Maurice Templesman. She seemed happy and at peace. In early 1994, I knew that she was ill, but I had no idea it was so serious. I refused to look on the black side when I kept remembering how she'd always been such a strong lady. To me, there were four Jackies. One, the inquiring reporter and pre-White House wife and mother. Two, Jackie, the first lady of the world. Three, Jackie of the Onassis International Jet Set. And four, Jackie, the working mother. Nothing in her nature had prepared her for the role. She was insecure, secretive, shy, but she changed herself, using those very same elements into the ultimate cultural icon. Over time, Jackie gained the poise and influence of a major political force, and she was able to turn elegance into power. History will grant her the prestige and respect it accords to other famous stateswomen, such as Cleopatra, Catherine the Great, and Empress Josephine. In one exquisite moment, Jackie Kennedy became the epitome of glamour and elegance, the uncrowned queen of America. Her legacy is one of beauty, grace, and charm. <laughs>